Welcome back. As promised, we have the management of Uno Minda. The company posted very strong Q2 earnings. The Q2 revenues jumped 36 percent. Margins also expanded to over 11 percent. And the company has a growing presence in the electric vehicle space. They've signed two new joint ventures in this quarter gone by. Sunil Bora, the group CFO at Uno Minda, joins us now to talk about that. Mr. Bora, good morning and thanks for joining in. Uh, in the first half of the year, the revenue run rate was solid, almost a 50 percent growth compared to last time. Can you maintain this run rate for the second half? And because because of the premiumization that we are seeing due to an increased presence in electric vehicles, do you think you can better your margins as well? Right. So, Sonia, you are right that uh, we had definitely a very good first half and we are expecting this momentum to continue in the second half. In fact, we do expect that second half uh, in terms of bottom line uh, should be even better than what uh, we have been able to deliver in the first uh, half of the year. Moving to the premiumization, definitely, I think it's a theme which has been playing for uh, last uh, few years, and we do expect this premiumization theme to play for next, uh, I would say, more than a, a five to seven year kind of scenario, because the kind of uh, adaptation of the alloy wheels we are seeing today, where we are in India versus some of our global peers, is almost uh, less than half. So there is a huge room for growth there. Uh, the transition to uh, LED lighting from a normal halogen lighting. There are a lot of features uh, which are getting uh, adapted into the vehicle, uh, like uh, ambient lighting or maybe a wireless charger. There are a host of products which uh, we are seeing the traction amongst our customers. And there has been a new trend which has been emerging is that people also, uh, earlier if you see five, seven, ten years back, people used to opt for the uh, cost efficient model. But nowadays people are op actually opting for a higher end model of uh, any vehicle. So that also comes with a lot of added features. So we do expect this premiumization theme, as you mentioned, uh, in uh, quite some time in future to continue. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Bora, the second half of the year will be better than the first half of the year in, the, in terms of revenues. We've done around 5,400 crores. So should we assume that you at least do 11 and a half, 12,000 crores for the year? Will it be better, first of all? And also, as you're saying, that premiumization is something that you're looking at. So from these yeah. levels, you've been in that band of around 10 to around 11% odd. Uh, do you see a couple of hundred basis points improving? We're not asking for FI23. Let's talk about FI24. Does it go yeah. beyond that 12% hump? Yeah, so I'll uh, uh, respond to first questions first. So definitely we are uh, very bullish uh, on uh, the near future. So we do expect second half to be at least in line or uh, better than the first half. Yes, Q3 normally tend to be a little softer uh, than Q2 because in Q2 you do have a festive season which was early this year. Uh, so the inventory buildup, et cetera, which happened in the system happened in September. And because the festive season started with the first week of October. So yes, there will be some uh, maybe flattish uh, kind of, uh, or maybe some softening in Q3, but Q4 we are expecting again to uh, improve. So overall H2 in terms of uh, profitability, we do expect it to be better than uh, uh, first half of the year. Then second was your question in terms of margin. Definitely, uh, the operating leverage is uh, helping us uh, to improve our margins, as you would have seen quarter on quarter. And uh, while I will not comment on uh, FY24 at this stage, uh, but in terms of FY23, at the beginning of the year, uh, I remember on the same channel, we have given guidance of a range of 11 to 12%. And I'm pretty confident that we should be able to maintain this range of 11 12%, which last year was uh, sub 11% or maybe around 10% or so. Don't you think you can do better than that? I'm asking because even the kit value, you know, in your own presentation, I mean, your kit value across the board has gone up quite a bit. In four-wheelers, for example, it's risen to about 1.46 lakhs versus about 80,500 earlier. And there's a big jump that you've seen across the board, uh, even on a quarterly run rate, whether it's in the switches segment, in the casting business, you've doubled your quarterly run rate. So don't you think you can do better than this 11 to 12 percent margin band that you've laid out? So, Sonia, uh, first of all, uh, in terms of kit value, definitely that has been our co uh, consistent endeavor as to how do we improve our uh, product value, how do we provide more features to our customers, and that's what helps you in terms of outperforming the market. As you know, that our uh, guidance has consistently been that we should grow at least 1.5x of what market grows, and we have been beating it uh, in last many quarters, and we hope so that we should be able to do in near future as well. Now, coming in terms of uh, revenue, I think uh, it has multiple factors at play uh, or, or margin what you spoke about. We are in a competitive world. We all know about it, right? So our first objective is we should be able to capture the market of whatever products we are in, uh, a sizable uh, wallet share. 
and there you all know that there are competitive pressures and in our industry if you see 11 to 12 percent uh, margin is a pretty decent margin and it is something we would like to hold on and consolidate uh, going forward you know you said uh, i won't be able to uh, sunil hi good morning uh, uh, talk about fi 24 i was about to ask about fi 25 the <laughs> uh, you know first estimates of fi 25 are already out right uh, two years prior and i was looking at uh, some revenue estimates etc broadly how should we think about it 20% uh, kind of revenue growth top line growth uh, for the next many years so look uh, it all depends on i think this is we have discussed in past also uh, and on our customers because 90% of our volumes goes directly in line fitment to our OEMs. So if industry grows, definitely we will be able to benefit uh, out of that growth. And if industry grows by X, assuming industry grows by 8-10%, I'm pretty confident we should be able to grow 1.5 uh, X of that in terms of our top line. Okay, you've signed two new JVs as well in the electric vehicle space. One with Tachi S for uh, seat recliner mechanisms and the other one is with Bueller Motors for traction motors. Tell us a little bit about that. When does, uh, you know, what are the synergies that you can see here and when do the revenues start to come on your books? Yeah, so uh, first uh, Tachi S, uh, as you know that this JV we have uh, signed uh, in the last quarter. So this is primarily an entry into a four-wheeler segment. So as you know, in terms of seating, we are currently doing seating primarily for two-wheelers, off-roads and uh, commercial vehicles. We were not present in uh, four-wheelers in a big way. So this JB with Tachi S, and Tachi S we know is a global uh, company uh, with the multiple uh, manufacturing plants across the globe with more than $2 billion of revenue headquartered in Japan. So we will uh, be initially making uh, only the seat uh, recliner mechanisms to start with, and we are working with them that over the period, we should be able to give first full recliner and then gradually migrate onto the full seating system. In terms of first revenue, uh, this will be at the end of uh, the next uh, fiscal, which is somewhere around February, March of 24. Uh, next was the Buller JV, and uh, Buller JV is primarily for the EV traction motors, as you know. Uh, so this uh, JV we have just uh, concluded uh, last week, uh, and uh, we will be developing and making initially the motors for the two-wheeler and three-wheeler EV vehicles, and we do expect uh, the revenue from this uh, JV to start in the middle of uh, next financial year. All right, Mr. Bora, EVs you mentioned a couple of times. How much will EVs contribute as a percentage of revenues for FY24? If you could give us a sense, how much in FY23, how do you see it scaling up? And there will be a margin difference between your core business as well as the EV, right? I'm guessing the EVs could be in the near term a little bit lower. So what's the margin difference? Yeah, so as of now, it is very difficult to say first in terms of what the revenues will be going forward because market is still evolving. While, as you know, that we have made uh, a kit value which is unmatched in the industry, but still the market is evolving. We all know that IC market has been there for a century and EV market has just started. So whatever products we have, we all know that there are customers who might be thinking to do some products in-house. There are customers of the same products who are outsourcing. So market is evolving. So at this stage, it is very difficult to say that if my kit value is say uh, 40,000 or 50,000 rupees, whether I will be actually getting that kit value into a vehicle is still a uh, thing which is getting evolved. Uh, we are very, very positive on it. You know that for all our existing businesses, there is no threat. So all our existing go into EV and EV is something which is additional growth uh, uh, for us, which is a significant growth. So we are uh, working with a lot of our customers uh, and for all the products we have, we have one or two anchor customers. So in terms of penetration, definitely uh, we have to wait and watch as to how market evolves. And in terms of revenue, we do expect as part of uh, two-wheeler segment and three-wheeler segment, which is half of our revenue, we do expect this number to grow to double digits in next uh, double digit percentages in next uh, couple of years because you know recently uh, the numbers have while have been growing but it's a very low base ev volume as percentage of two wheeler is just like 2 3% so i think it's a it's a long journey but we do expect that this long journey will be sort of covered in a very short time so we do expect in next uh, 3 to 5 years this numbers to be very very significant but yes i think we have to wait and watch what market throws on us Okay, by the way, uh, just hold on, Sunil. You know, we need to mention some stocks. There is a slam dunk that's taking place in Paytm this morning. Almost 7% lower now on Paytm. Huge volumes over there. And let's not forget, it's already a 60% knockdown that we've seen on Paytm this year. Uh, Nika is also down about 2.5%. Uh, a couple of others. Five Star Finance is um, far from a five star performance today. It's down about 2% this morning. And something like a delivery, etc., is also under pressure. So just keep an eye out on what's happening in the market. Just one word before we let you go, Sunil, on the debt situation. Because, you know, on an absolute basis, quarter on quarter, the debt has gone up almost 25%, sitting at 700 crores. Although the debt equity is still manageable, 
but the core debt do you see it rise further so uh, sonia i think it's more of a, a timing issue uh, so in the last uh, six months if you see that debt has increased roughly by 150 crores net debt which is not a very big thing because you know that we have done some equity investment so we have done a equity investment of around 130 crore in frivo ag which was a more strategic investment we have done roughly around 30 odd crore of uh, investment in uh, our jv tokai recommenda and uh, if you just simply add these two this is more than 150 crore so what in essence you see is that the whatever additional working capital requirement uh, we had because of the 36% growth we have seen in uh, this half uh, year and also all the capexes uh, which we are doing as you know that we are currently having uh, 9 to 10 projects which are under execution so all of that capex we have been able to fund uh, from the uh, internal cash generation and despite that our net debt to equity is just like i think 0. 0.2 or something so i think we are in a very very solid situation and based on our current projections we are fairly comfortable that we should be able to fund all our growth plans through primarily internal accruals yes there might be short term mismatches but i think as you rightly mentioned we are in a very strong position in terms of our balance sheet all right uh, we we'll leave it there sunil thanks very much good speaking with you and uh, good luck speak with you soon again well